quitting smoking during COVID. How do I actually quit smoking? If you're one of those people that you're afraid that you're gonna contract COVID and you're a smoker and it may cause you death, that's a real fear. Make sure you stay to the end of this video because at the end of the video, I'm going to give you seven tips, tricks, and hacks you can do to actually quit smoking for the rest of your life, especially if you're concerned about COVID. If this is useful to you, this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps me. Make sure you smack that uh, notification button, okay? Because it just simply will let you know when I've posted new content and I post two new videos every week. And also, in the description, there's a link to my calendar. You can book yourself into a free 50-minute phone consultation with me and I'll get you on the right track to quitting smoking for the rest of your life. Take advantage of it. It's free. In a moment, we'll be right back after this 16-second video. So the big question is, how do smokers like us beat the odds and quit for life? How do we quit with no craving, no withdrawal, and never ever have a single drag, draw, or puff of a cigarette again? That is the question, and this channel is designed to give you the answers. My name is Ted Bradley. Welcome to The Secret to Quitting Smoking for Life. Quitting smoking during COVID, are you one of those people that's afraid to contract COVID because you're a smoker? If you are, stay to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you seven tips, tricks, and hacks you can do to quit smoking for the rest of your life, okay? So here's what we're gonna go into in this video. We're going to go into the facts. So what do we need to know? If you're worried about COVID and you're a smoker, you need to know the facts because the facts help you make an informed decision and they actually help motivate you. It's one of the prerequisites in my program for preparing your mind for quitting smoking. You need to understand the facts. And there is quite a bit of science now out on the relationship between smoking and COVID. So you want to know that. The second thing we're going to go through is how do we move from fear to action? So what do I mean by that? If you're watching this video about COVID and smoking, you're probably afraid to contract COVID and die from the COVID disease and its relationship to smoking. Okay, that's a rational fear. So how do we go from a place of fear to a place of action? Okay, three things are required. We're going to go through all three of those things. I'm going to explain them. The third thing is I'm going to give you the seven things you can actually do. Seven practical tips, tricks, and hacks that you can actually do okay to go from a place of fear to a place of action and actually quit smoking so let's let's hop into this right away the facts okay we have to first kind of parse this out between the facts about smoking and then the facts about covid and it's pretty obvious you can see it here by the color coding there's a relationship between the two but let, let's just go through this quickly smoking smoking any kind of tobacco we know reduces lung capacity fact it also increases the risk of respiratory infections. We know that most people that smoke will die from likely lung cancer or some other form of cancer or some other form of respiratory disease like COPD. The list of respiratory diseases and smoking is voluminous. There, it, it's The book on this is massive and the research on it is massive, okay? So we know that, we know, we know that smoking suppresses our immune system. It's one of the major impacts on our body. We also know that smoking is an inflammatory. Smoking and nicotine attacks almost all of our major organs and causes inflammation. It's why smokers get heart attacks. It's why smokers have stress and, that, and they get strokes. So we know that the inflammation caused by smoking causes us all sorts of health problems. This is what smoking does to us. These are all things we know. You probably already know this already, okay? So let's look at COVID quickly. COVID is a respiratory disease. That's what it is. It's a respiratory disease that causes inflammation. That's what COVID does. COVID attacks the immune system. So let's talk about this for a second. When they do a test for COVID, they do a swab, okay? If it comes back positive and you're gonna to go to the hospital, they really wanna know, they take an X-ray of your lungs because COVID attacks the lungs because it's a respiratory disease that attacks our immune system and causes inflammation, okay? COVID attacks your lungs and decreases your lung capacity. 
People who die in the hospital with COVID basically suffocate to death, okay? COVID is a respiratory infection. That's what COVID is. If you smoke, we know from science, the death rate by COVID increases by 16.9%. What that means is if you're a smoker and you contract COVID, you're automatically in the at-risk group. You have an increased chance of death by COVID by 16.9%. That is massive. So let's just compare these two. Smoking reduces lung capacity. COVID decreases lung capacity. Smoking is, causes respiratory infections. COVID is a respiratory infection. Smoking suppresses the immune system. COVID attacks the immune system. Smoking is inflammatory, okay? COVID is a respiratory disease causing inflammation in your lungs. Should be very self-evident, the connection between COVID and smoking. If you are a smoker and you contract COVID, you increase your likelihood of death by 16.9%. Those are the facts. So now that we know the facts, it can be a little scary. So it really begs the question, how do we go from fear? How do we go from our knowledge or understanding about COVID to actual action? And in particular, not any action, but change. We want to change, right? So self-change. There's three things that are required for self-change. You have to have these three things. If you don't, change is very difficult. First thing you have to have is you have to understand that something has to change. I often refer to this as sick and tired of being sick and tired. In other words, you're so sick of smoking, you're actually sick of being sick of it. That's a really great place to be. So if you're a smoker, and you're watching this video and you're thinking about my program to quit smoking and you're just tired of smoking, you're just so tired of, you're tired of being tired of it, that's a good place to be you are ready for change. That's the first prerequisite to change. That's a good thing, okay? The second thing is, and this is the one that smokers struggle with a lot, that something must be me. I must change. So something must change, that something must be me. Here's why smokers struggle with this. Most smokers that are stuck, and, and the average person that quits cold turkey attempts 30 times, the reason why is, the one thing they all have in common, people who constantly are failing, they treat smoking like it's an addiction. It's why uh, Chantex and the nicotine replacement therapies don't work. It's why their effective rate is the same as placebo. Because we're focused on the addiction part of smoking. Smoking is an addiction. We're so focused on it that what happens is our brain goes, the problem is outside of us. So the power for change is out there because the addiction it's saying that's happening to us. It's a chemical that's happening to us. So we're a victim, okay? Having a victim mentality is very difficult to change anything in your life if you see yourself as a victim of the addiction, okay? The first thing we need to do is reframe what smoking really is, which is really what it really is that keeps us stuck, is not realizing the habit. I'm not gonna go into the details of that here. So. The point I'm making is, if you're focused on it being addiction, it's not you that has to change. It's something outside of you, something that's happening to you. Just realize that what actually has to change here is you. You have to change. So you have to have, something has to change. That something has to be me. And when? Now. Not three months from now, or I'm gonna wait till after my summer vacation. Now, you have to have those three qualities in order to have change in your life. Something has to change. That something must be me. Personal responsibility and accountability. And when? Now. Okay. If you have these three things, change is possible, very possible, and also very likely. So let's just go into the seven tips, tricks, and hacks that you can actually do. This is peel right out of parts of my program. So the first thing is do the research. Understand what quitting smoking does to your body. The benefits of quitting smoking. Also understand the damage that smoking does. Start to inform yourself. Do the research on what I call pick a method. Number two, they're, the top three are related. So do the research, look at all the different methods. There are 12 known methods to quitting smoking. There's really three because they can be grouped into three buckets. Methods that are for your conscious mind, the books, the apps, the Facebook groups. Methods that involve your unconscious mind, hypnotherapy, uh, EFT, neuro-linguistic programming. And then the third one is 
things that treat it as an addiction. So the nicotine replacement therapies, the Chantex, the Zyban, the drugs. So there's really those three buckets, things for your conscious mind, things that treat it as an addiction, and things for your unconscious mind. So do the research, pick one of those methods. When I say pick, I don't mean pick one at the expense of the others. Pick the one that you want to be a dominant part of your quit smoking journey. Because number three, make sure that whatever method you pick, it uses the stacking method. What's the stacking method? You won't find a lot out there on it because I invented it six years ago. I made up the, the, the term. And all I mean by stacking is, you're a whole person. You're not just your conscious mind or your unconscious mind. You don't just have an addiction, you also have a habit, but you're a whole person. Why are we only using one method? Why are we just using hypnosis? Or why are we just using nicotine replacement therapy? Why aren't we using them all? You are a whole person. You, you only have one mind. Why are we only reading Alan Carr's book? Who, by the way, used hypnosis to quit smoking. But why are you only doing one way? Stack them together, use multiple ways. Okay, that's what we do in my program. So make sure you pick a method that uses the stacking idea. Four, learn how to deal with cravings. Why? Well, because smoking is an addiction. It may not be what keeps you stuck. It may be the habit, but we still have to deal with getting the nicotine out of our system and the potential for cravings and withdrawal. So learn about them. Go watch my YouTube video on the 12 different ways to deal with cravings, okay? That's a really good thing to do, learn how to deal with cravings. Five, prepare your mind for quitting smoking. Here's why. You know people that usually fail at quitting smoking because they go, oh, I'm just not gonna smoke, and they dump their cigarettes out right then and there. And then a day goes by and you know what you do. You drive by the gas station, you go inside and you buy smokes. It's not an effective method or model to quit smoking. You need to prepare your mind for quitting smoking. Okay? So whenever you pick a quit date, you wanna pick it five days off or more so that your mind starts to wrestle with the idea that you're going to quit smoking. It helps prepare your mind. Download an ebook. There are tons of free ebooks out there about how to prepare your mind for quitting smoking. There's one on my website, tedbradley.ca. You can download my ebook for free about how to prepare your mind. So prepare your mind for quitting smoking. Six, pick a quit date. Again, these kind of work together, but what it does is it sets you up for success when you actually pick a quit date. It's off there and your mind starts to, even when you're sleeping, prepare itself for that quit date. It really helps in a lot of ways to do that. Pick a quit date at least five days off. Seven, this is actually the most important one of all seven of these points, move forward. What do I mean by that? I just simply mean take action. Here's why. You can spend years doing the research and figuring out all the methods, and you should do all that, but you should have a limited time frame for it, because at some point you have to do something, because providence moves too. Here's what I mean. We know that people that are successful are not the smartest people. You can look at the people you graduated high school with. The A students often are not the most successful people in your, in your graduating class. Very rarely, actually. It is not a good indicator of success, okay? What is a good indicator of success? People that do things. People who take action and who are bold. Because when we do something, what happens is unforeseen things that we weren't ex expecting just happen to us to help move us forward. It might not get us to the exact destination we were planning on, but it will get us to a destination. Just sitting here and contemplating quitting smoking and looking at your computer and researching isn't going to be useful to you unless you give yourself a date, an end date, and a place for you to move forward. Here's the last point I want to make. It's like this. It's like walking out on a diving board as a five-year-old. So quitting smoking is no different. The pool is quitting smoking. So you're walking out that diving board, and as you're walking out the diving board, you're doing the research, you're looking at the different methods, you're picking one, you're considering finding a method or a program that uses stacking. Why? Only 7% of people quit smoking cold turkey. 93% of people quit smoking using a program, right? So look for one that uses stacking. Learn how to deal with cravings, educate yourself, okay? Prepare your mind, pick a date, and, but you have to take action. You've got to get to that end of that diving board, looking down at the swimming pool of quitting, and you have to just jump.
That's what you had to do as a five-year-old. At some point, you have to take action. And in fact, if I could only give you one piece of advice out of these seven tips, tricks, and hacks, take action, any kind of action. All you can simply just do something like click the link in the video description below for the free 15-minute phone consultation. Take that action, that action in the loan and of itself. And doing that free consultation with where I put you on the right track to quit smoking, that is an action you can do to set yourself in the right direction. Just do something, okay? If you like this video and it was useful to you, please subscribe to this channel, smash the notification button, like, share, and please make comments below. I would love to know from you. I would love to know what other type of videos you would like me to make. I make almost all of these videos based on people who reach out to me and say, I loved your video. Can you make one on this? That is how I make my videos. So comment in the video below about the other things you would like me to make videos about. Or ask me questions. I'm happy to answer any questions. Reach out to me, direct message me, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much and blessings to everybody.